Big Rally. Welcome to Hashtag PH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler. The Philippines climbs 30 notches in the 2014 Ease of Doing Business Report. A Pulse Asia survey shows public appreciation of the administration's anti-corruption drive drops. And at least 30,000 barangays proclaim winners for the barangay polls. Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The Philippines improves 30 notches in the global survey that measures how much red tape private businesses encounter when dealing with government. The Philippines ranks 108th out of 189 countries in the 2014 Doing Business Survey released by the International Finance Corporation, or IFC. In 2013, the Philippines ranked 138th. The country's ranking in the latest survey is better than the government's goal of rank 109. The Philippines ranks 6th highest in the ASEAN and brings the Philippines ahead of Indonesia, which is at 120th. Regulatory reforms helped improve the Philippines' ranking, such as an improved tax-paying system, simplified processes to obtain construction permits, and new regulations guaranteeing borrowers' right to access their data in the country's largest credit bureau. Singapore and Hong Kong remain in the list of 10 economies with the most business-friendly regulations. Experts say improving the ease of doing business in the country can create more jobs and lead to inclusive growth. Well, we're trying to create a better, a better, friendlier environment for doing business. And that involves cutting all the steps, cut, saving time. And that saves money for uh, entrepreneurs and investors. And today, over 95% of the labor force in the Philippines are either self-employed or working micro, small, and medium enterprises. And what you're doing now is to make sure that the jobs are created more and more in the future. And th that's the kind of the, you know, the A new Pulse Asia survey shows the Aquino administration's anti-corruption campaign suffers a ratings drop at the height of the pork barrel controversy involving alleged mastermind Janet Limnapoles. Public appreciation of the anti-corruption drive drops 12 percentage points from 59% in March to 47% in September. Since the last survey in June, the most urgent national concern also changed. Inflation as a national concern drops 13 points in the September survey from 61% in June. Concern about corruption increases 17 points from 31% in June to 48% in September. An earlier survey released by Pulse Asia showed no significant change in the approval rating of President Benigno Aquino. Pulse Asia Chief Research Fellow Anna Tabunda says survey respondents seem to differentiate the president from his administration. Justice Secretary Laila de Lima says the filing of the second batch of pork barrel cases may be moved to next week. De Lima says investigators and whistleblowers are, quote, distracted by the bail hearings in the separate serious illegal detention case filed against alleged pork barrel queen Janet Napoles. Senator Jingoy Estrada, one of the respondents in the first batch of cases, criticized De Lima for the delay, suggesting the government singled out opposition lawmakers in the first batch filed in September. Estrada and 37 others face plunder and corruption complaints before the ombudsman for their alleged participation in siphoning billions of discretionary funds in exchange for kickbacks. In response to Estrada's criticism, De Lima says what is clear or what is sure is that there will really be a second batch. De Lima says the second batch will still involve Nepalese related NGOs. On the night former Nepalis aide Ben Hurloy was rescued by the National Bureau of Investigation or NBI, he thought the NBI agents were sent by Nepalis, her brother, and senators and mayors to, quote, dispatch him. Louis recalls the incident during Nepalis' bail hearing Tuesday. Nepal's and her brother Reynald Lim faced serious illegal detention charges for allegedly keeping Loy in custody from December 2012 to March 22, 2013. Witnesses say the two suspected Loy of dabbling into Nepal's line of business, siphoning legislators' funds through dubious NGOs. 
Day two of Loy's testimony also dealt with the letters Loy allegedly wrote while detained in Napolis' Magallanes property. Loy says he wrote at least two letters while under detention. The Loy family says the letters prove Ben Hur was detained against his will, but the defense counters that it doesn't because the letters made no mention of him being detained. A day after the barangay elections, the Philippine National Police, or PNP, says the number of poll-related violence rises, but these have yet to be validated. During the election period of September 28 to October 28, the PNP records 46 incidents of election-related violence, including 24 on election day itself. The 2010 barangay elections had 22 total incidents. But PNP Deputy Director General Felipe Rojas Jr. says the PNP expects the 2013 figure to go down after validation. Of the 46 incidents, 39 were victims of shooting, one of strafing, three of stabbing, while three were victims of other forms of violence. The PNP says 25 total were killed, including nine who died on election day. This year, about 42,000 barangays held polls, with 6,216 barangays identified by the police as priority areas. As of 1 p.m. Tuesday, the Commission on Elections says winners are proclaimed in at least 30,790 barangays. The figure is 73.26% of the total barangays nationwide. The magnitude 7.2 quake that rocked central Visayas happened on a holiday, fortunately keeping school children away from danger. With the government rebuilding destroyed schools, the Education Department wants to make sure the new buildings will be earthquake-proof. G. Hieronimo reports. How strong was the earthquake that hit central Visayas on October 15? It killed more than 200 people, destroyed centuries-old churches, and isolated towns due to impassable bridges. Latest reports say more than 600 schools in Bohol alone were damaged. Fortunately, there were no casualties in schools that day, a holiday. Uh, medyo kakaiba yung, um, yung uh, challenge pag earthquake. Un unlike the usual baha o kaya ay bagyo, no? Kasi uh, sa earthquake nakokompromise yung uh, uh, structure, no? So, una-una, lahat ng eskwelahan, kesyo na damage o hindi, ay kailangan namin bisitahin. Luistro says the Department of Public Works and Highways will rebuild classrooms and make them more earthquake-proof. The latest building code requires structures that can withstand a magnitude 9 earthquake and 250 kilometers per hour winds. More than 500 classrooms are turned over to the Department of Education, the first batch in the Public-Private Partnership School Infrastructure Project. Winning contractor Megaworld also says the school buildings will last generations. Uh, the method that we use here, we use the solid concrete instead of hollow blocks because hindi lang naman earthquake eh. in, 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 even though yung durability, we're talking about 50 years, 60 years, the solid concrete will still last longer. From leaks uh, to even to earthquakes, it's even stronger. About 30% of schools in Bohol will have to be torn down and replaced. Students in affected schools will have to hold classrooms in tents. If October 15 was a school day, more lives would have been lost. More than meeting its target number of classrooms, the department now faces a new challenge to build strong schools that can withstand the worst of disasters. G. Geronimo, Rappler, Bulacan. Let's now look at Rappler's wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 4, at least 11 people died Monday in Northern Europe as a fierce storm lashed the region. The storm cuts electricity in Britain and France, leaving more than 500,000 homes without power before connection was restored. It also forces mass cancellations of train services across southern England, Denmark, the Netherlands, and parts of Germany. The storm was named Christian in France and dubbed St. Jude by British media. At number six, a global watchdog says two chemical weapons sites in Syria are inaccessible because of the security situation in the war-torn country. In a statement, the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, or OPCW, says inspectors had not yet visited two of the 23 chemical sites. The joint OPCW United Nations mission is charged with destroying Syria's chemical arsenal by mid-2014. And at number eight, following allegations of U.S. spying on its allies in Europe, 
Journalist Glenn Greenwald says the U.S. surveillance is about power, not anti-terrorist operations. Greenwald, a former reporter of The Guardian, used leaked documents from whistleblower Edward Snowden to break stories on secret U.S. intelligence operations. Early on, the U.S. government defended its program, saying it thwarted many terrorist plots. But recent news reports say the U.S. allegedly spied on Germany, France, and Spain. In an interview with CNN, Greenwald says the U.S. spying system is directed at innocent people. He adds this is clearly about political power and economic espionage, and the claim that this is all about terrorism is pure deceit. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Let's check out today's Mood Navigator. Several stories here that have been on the Mood Navigator for a while, actually. Let's check out a new one, this green circle. Danielle Razon, Service First. This is about a personality in Rappler's Do More Awards. This has 49% of people feeling happy and 47% of people feeling inspired. Over to the left, a circle of a different color. Malampaya shut down to raise power rates, has 78% of readers feeling angry and 13% of people feeling sad. Over to the far right, let's check out this other green circle. Pope Francis has 10 million followers. This is on Twitter, of course. 84% are happy about this, while 10% of people don't care. All these stories contribute to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, October 29, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.